Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. Today I'm going to share with you the book Narconomics, How to Run a Drug Cartel. The author is Tom Wainwright, a journalist from The Economist who has long covered news in Central and South America. Through in-depth investigations, he analyzed the operating model behind today's drug industry, allowing us to look at this century-old problem from a brand new perspective. The book is divided into two parts. The first part analyzes the operating model of the drug industry in the Americas, and the second part proposes more scientific and effective anti-drug strategies. Let's first look at the content in the first part of the book. First is the human resource management of the drug industry. For any industry, talent is the most valuable resource. But the drug industry faces a huge problem, the extremely high employee turnover rate, mainly for the following two reasons. First, the drug industry is frequently cracked down by the police, and many employees end up in prison. Second, there is fierce internal competition between different drug gangs, and many employees get killed in these fights. As a result, drug organizations need to continuously recruit new employees. To this end, they have turned prisons into their own talent pool. Prisons hold large numbers of people with criminal backgrounds who often choose to deal drugs to make a living after being released. But recruitment alone is not enough. Drug organizations also need to properly manage their existing employees. To this end, they are shifting towards a corporate management model. For example, the gang, Our Family, avoids internal exploitation by establishing a grade system where employees can report and supervise their superiors, thus attracting more people to join. It can be said that drug organizations are solving their own human resource management challenges quite well through corporate-style operations. Rapidly expanding territory is what every ambitious organization dreams of, and the drug industry is no exception. In order to achieve rapid expansion, some drug cartels have started to learn from McDonald's by using a franchising model. Specifically, the headquarters authorizes local criminals to use the group's brand to sell drugs. These locals can save on startup costs and achieve higher sales performance by leveraging the group's brand appeal. Meanwhile, the drug cartel can quickly develop new territories through this model and require franchisees to submit a portion of their profits. For example, the Mexican cartel, Las Zetas, relied on this franchising model to expand their influence from eastern Mexico to the Caribbean coast of Central America in just a few years, achieving an almost criminal version of the McDonald's model. Just as legitimate businesses have to face competitors, the drug industry also has fierce competition. Major drug cartels will stop at nothing to fight for markets and resources. For example, in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, there was once a case where two large cartels competed for drug transit routes, resulting in over 4,000 murders in a single year. This kind of brutal competitive tactics has undoubtedly had an extremely adverse impact on local communities. In order to gain public support, major drug cartels also engage in public relations by posting posters on the streets to promote how law-abiding they are. They hope to establish an image of justice through this method to prevent the public from reporting their whereabouts to the police. However, after years of bloody competition, some drug cartels have realized that this kind of mutual killing is not worth the gain. So they chose to cooperate and divide up their spheres of influence, which reduced unnecessary infighting and loss of life. Through the above analysis, we can see that the drug industry in the Americas has long achieved a high level of commercialization, applying many mature business practices to obtain greater profits. Now that the drug business operates so efficiently, how can we effectively fight against drugs? Next, let's look at the content in the second part of the book. One is to tackle it from the demand side. In the past, many countries chose to deal with the supply side, such as eradicating cocoa trees. But it turned out that the supply side had limited effects because the demand for drugs is inelastic reduced supply cannot shrink the market size. Therefore, the author suggests that we should start from the demand side and compress the drug consumer market. The specific measures are as follows. First, strengthen public education on the hazards of drugs to encourage more people to voluntarily stay away from drugs. Particular attention should be paid to educating minors. 
Second, carry out professional rehabilitation treatment vigorously. Hardcore drug users are the main consumer force, and successfully rehabilitating them would be like unlocking the market. For example, through rehabilitation treatment, Switzerland successfully reduced the number of new drug users in Zurich by 80%. It can be said that the key to effective drug prohibition is to start with reducing demand rather than simply restricting supply. 2. Preventing crimes is more effective. In addition to shrinking market size, we also need to work on combating the drug industry. The author believes the focus should be on preventing crimes rather than just relying on law enforcement to crack down on existing crimes. Specific measures include First, improve prison conditions to prevent prisons from continuing to serve as a talent pool for criminal organizations. Second, provide legal, psychological counseling and career assistance to inmates to help them reintegrate into society. Finally, remove gang tattoos from inmates to make it easier for them to find legitimate jobs. Although these preventive measures do not have immediate effects, in the long run, the positive effects of investing in each preventive measure far outweigh traditional law enforcement crackdowns. This is also a point that the author wants to emphasize in particular. Through the above sharing, we can see that Narconomics provides us with valuable business analysis perspectives, allowing us to better understand the operating model of the drug industry. We can no longer simply view drug dealers as cruel demons, but should treat them as businessmen chasing profits. Only in this way can we find effective solutions to curb the expansion of the drug industry. In life, we should not rely solely on moral judgment to look at problems either. Many seemingly evil things actually have inherent operating logic. If we put aside subjective emotions and conduct in-depth analysis, we will be able to find targeted solutions. If you are interested in the operating mechanisms of the global drug industry, I highly recommend reading this book Narconomics. It will give you a whole new understanding of this world. Thank you for watching. See you next time.